Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to do a low water immersion experiment. I was out on Paula Birch's site the other day. Her website is pbirch.net and I noticed her page for low water immersion. So I started reading it and decided it was something I needed to try. I'll leave a link down below the video in the description to her website if you want to read the instructions for yourself and check out the rest of her site. She has lots of useful information about all kinds of dyeing, how to mix colors, what are pure colors, what are mixed colors. She has lots of information that is very useful. For this experiment I'm using two shirts, one that is dry and one that is damp. Both of these shirts have been washed and dried. I didn't use any fabric softener. I haven't soaked them in anything. They're exactly the same brand and style of shirt and the same size of shirt. I have both of the shirts turned inside out as well. I'm beginning with a dry shirt, laying it out flat and using my fingers to scrunch it and make folds in the shirt. Then without tying the shirt with rubber bands or kite string or anything else, I'm going to pick the shirt up and put it inside of a plastic container. I'm using a container that is large enough to fit the shirt, but small enough that the shirt fits tightly down inside the container. After I put the shirt down inside the container, I'm going to add additional folds with my fingers and keep pressing the shirt down until it fits nice and tight. The next shirt is the damp shirt. I took my shirt to the sink, ran it under regular tap water, wrung it out by hand until it was just barely damp. I'm going to repeat the same process to make folds in the shirt and put it down inside of a plastic container. The container is the same exact size and kind of container that I used for the dry shirt. Now it's time to start applying the dye. For this shirt, I used three different Dharma colors. I'm starting with deep orange, hot hibiscus, and plum. When I mixed these colors up, I didn't add any urea to the water. I just used dye and distilled water when I mixed the dye. I mixed it at regular strength, and I mixed a half a cup of each color. I'm starting with a deep orange and I'm adding half of this container to the dry shirt and I'm just going to add it in a random pattern. After I've added half of the container, I'm going to add the rest of the container to the damp shirt. 
As you can tell, the dye is already starting to spread out more and cover more on the damp shirt than it did on the dry shirt. It pretty much stayed in place where I put it on the dry shirt. The next color I'm going to use is the Hot Hibiscus. I'm just going to apply that one randomly too. And then add the second part of the container to the damp shirt. So by now, my dry shirt is still got a whole lot of white left on it, but the damp shirt is starting to fill in really nicely with the color. The last color is the plum. It's really difficult not to add some additional dye to this dry shirt because there's still a whole lot of white left on it. According to the instructions, I'm supposed to put the shirts aside anywhere from one minute up to an hour to allow the dye to run throughout the fabric. I'm going to go ahead and just leave mine for 30 minutes. At the end of 30 minutes, I need to come back and apply the soda ash solution. My understanding of the instructions are that I'm supposed to use one teaspoon of soda ash or sodium carbonate for every one cup of dye and every one cup of water that I use to dissolve the sodium carbonate in. So what I've done is each shirt has got three-fourths of a cup of dye inside of the shirt and then I'm going to mix up one and a quarter cup of soda ash solution to pour into each individual shirt, making a total of two cups of liquid in each shirt. So that means I need to use two teaspoons of soda ash or sodium carbonate dissolved in one and a quarter cups of hot water for each shirt. So at the end of 30 minutes I'm going to come back and I'm going to add or pour the soda ash solution over the top of my shirts. I'm starting with the shirt that started out dry and I'm just slowly pouring the soda ash solution over the top of the shirt. I'm trying to coat the entire shirt. I'm going to do the same exact thing with the damp shirt. Now the instructions say that I need to leave the soda ash in the shirt for a minimum of one hour but I can leave it for up to 24 to 48 hours. I decided to leave mine for two and a half hours and so at the end of two and a half hours I came back, rinsed each of the shirts individually, I threw them into the washing machine with Dharma's textile detergent, washed them in hot water twice, dried them in the dryer using no fabric softener and this is what our shirts look like. So the shirt that started out damp is definitely got a lot more color on it than the one that started out dry. The colors look a little bit more watercolor too on that shirt than they do on the dry shirt. Also, the dry shirt has some areas where, I don't know, it kind of looks like lightning or something. I don't know, it just kind of has a different effect to it. 
I think if I probably would have used about another quarter cup on the dry shirt, it would have gotten all of the white areas filled in. But that was kind of the purpose of this experiment, is to see how much dye would cover and what the differences would be between a damp shirt and a dry shirt with this technique. Hey, if you guys have enjoyed watching this video, I sure would appreciate it if you'd hit the big red subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.